Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. Elias Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Monday, February 19th, 2024, and here are the readings for today. A reading from St. Peter's first Catholic letter, chapter 2, verses 21 through 25, and chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. Beloved, Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he trusted to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Likewise, you wives, be submissive to your husbands, so that some, though they do not obey the word, may be won without a word by the behavior of their wives, when they see your reverent and chaste behavior. Let not yours be the outward adorning with braiding of hair, decoration of gold, and wearing of fine clothing, but let it be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable jewel of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. So once the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves and were submissive to their husbands, as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. And you are now her children, if you do right and let nothing terrify you. Likewise, your husbands live considerately with your wives, bestowing honor on the woman as the weaker sex, since you are joint heirs of the grace of life, in order that your prayers may not be hindered. Finally, all of you have unity of spirit, sympathy, love of brethren, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Do not return evil for evil or reviling for reviling. But on the contrary, bless, for to this you have been called, that you may obtain a blessing. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 12, verses 13 through 17. Let us be attentive. At that time, the chief priests and the scribes sent to Jesus some of the Pharisees and some of the Herodians to entrap him in his talk. And they came and they said to him, Teacher, we know that you are true and care for no man, for you do not regard the position of men, but truly teach the way of God. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay them or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why do you put me to the test? Bring me a coin and let me look at it. And they brought one, and he said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said to him, Caesar's. Jesus said to them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they were amazed at him. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. I think one of the more challenging aspects of Christian existence today is what it exactly is that we should do and what shouldn't we do when it comes to obeying laws and being good citizens and that kind of thing. You know, in ancient times, like after the uh, ascension of Christ and after Pentecost, when you get into the time when our Lord has left the disciples and ascended to heaven and they're starting to form the new church, they received a lot of criticisms from their neighbors because they were not, well, politically active enough. And what I mean by that is they didn't go to the town square and participate in the cultic sacrifices that were part of what it meant to be a good citizen in the Greek world. So when you have a situation like that, how do you respond? Well, a lot of times the early persecutions, Christians were put to death for two reasons. The first is for treason and the second is cannibalism. Neither, of course, are true. We are not cannibals, even though our Lord says, take, eat, this is my body, drink, eat, all of this, this is my blood. We know that that is through the 
transmutation of the gifts, the bread and the wine, that then become his body and blood. There's no physical body and blood, like from me or from someone else. It becomes mystically transformed or transfigured into his body and blood, but the outward appearances remain bread and wine. That's the first part. The second part, because of the sacrifices, well, Christians would not participate in sacrifices. There's only one sacrifice that matters, the one that Christ performed once and for all, through his ascension on the cross first, and also the counterpart of the heavenly sacrifice that is made at the same time as is told in St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews. So that sacrifice, though, is on behalf of all and for all. It doesn't say on behalf of all card-carrying Christians and for no one else. And it doesn't say for Jews only and nobody else. It says once and for all. For all. And so Christians do pray for the well-being of the city, the well-being of the country, the well-being of people, regardless of who they are or to whom they belong. Slave or free, male or female, Jew or Greek, we don't care. Okay, so that's part of it. Part of it is that in order to communicate and keep ourselves from being persecuted, we make sure that the towns that we're offering these sacrifices know that our prayers are being offered as well. Okay, well, that might not settle well with them. But then we return to what our Lord himself says in several different places. And I've had many discussions about things like this in very recent days, abiding by laws and so forth. And yes, it is important for Christians to be ab abiding, but, well, let me explain. In this Gospel of St. Mark, it says, he asks them to look for a coin, they give it to him, and he asks whose inscription and whose face is on the coin. Then when they say it's Caesar's, he says, well, then give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And so every Christian would be expected if there is such a thing, to pay a tax. Because taxes are levied upon everybody, not just Christians or not just Jews or not just people in Judea, but everybody. Everybody is responsible, and Caesar is the one whose head is on the coin. You give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. But Caesar's head is not on us. So we don't give him us. We don't give him our way of life that way. Now, before everyone begins to think, that I'm saying, okay, it's okay to break all the laws. If you read the Gospels, if you look carefully at the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5 through 7, if you take a look at St. Luke's account on the Sermon on the Plain, which is in the later parts of Luke 6, you have a set of instructions that far exceed any law that we have here in America, or any law that you find in the Ten Commandments, or anywhere else in the Scriptures. It talks about how even if your eye causes you to sin, it's better to pluck it out. Well, actually, that's not in the Sermon on the Mount, but that is in the Gospel of Matthew. And so we still have those kinds of mandates. If we live according to what our Lord has taught us, there are no laws in the society that we're capable of breaking because we will be better at keeping the expectations of what it means to be a Christian than they are living under the expectations of the law. Render to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. That is indeed true. So yes, unfortunately, out there, we should be paying our taxes. But in addition to that, we also should recognize that we care for everyone. And so we are indeed a law-abiding kind of people when it comes to the care of others, the good treatment of others, the mercy extended towards others, the love for others. Yes, all of those things Christians should do according to the law and above the law. When it comes to other things, pagan sacrifices, attending sports things that directly conflict with church, Christians should not necessarily follow in those footsteps. Some do, but they shouldn't. And that's really the key. Render to God what belongs to God. And what belongs to God? All of us. We are to love God with a heart, mind, soul, and strength. That means that every aspect of our existence is focused on God. There's a great line, actually one of the things that spurred this discussion that I had this week, from a Catholic nun who said, 
that we love God only insofar as the person in the world that we love the least. That's a very powerful statement. But if we love everyone equally, then we have nothing to worry about. And indeed, we are loving God freely with a pure heart. And again, there's no need for us to worry about outside laws because the laws that govern us from inside are more than sufficient to make sure that we live up to the expectations of the laws that are found on the outside. But those laws, the laws on the inside, are the ones that we should be following, the teachings of Christ in those two sermons and elsewhere throughout the Gospels. These are the focal points of our existence. If we do live according to these instructions, we will find life in them. We will not need some outside agency telling us what to do. In fact, we can help them understand what they should be doing through our example, through our kindness, and through our mercy. So that is where we find ourselves. We find ourselves in a situation right now where we can exceed the laws that are found in the land and show people the way, not through the rule of law, not through threat of punishment, but rather through love, compassion, mercy, and reconciliation with one another and with our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Have a great day, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.